Hello and welcome to the show. I am Puneet Vadoha and today we have with us Pulkit Agarwal, Head of India Content at S&P Global Commodity Insights. Uh, let me begin by asking you your outlook for uh, crude oil prices for uh, 2024. See, our outlook for uh, the crude oil for year ahead is is the boring same levels as, as it is now, you know, between 80 to 90. That's what we think uh, crude oil is going to be in the next year. That's that's down to you know a slowing demand growth for next year, and also you know because OPEC plus has to do a lot of market management. Given that you know the non-OPEC plus supply is going to increase massively in the next year, which is going to outstrip the demand growth as well. Can you guys give us some insights uh, as to how the crude oil demand is likely to pan out uh, in the year ahead? See, uh, as regards crude oil, uh, in in 2023 we saw a demand growth of almost two million barrels. Or thereabouts, but in in the next year, we 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 see the uh, you know specific oil demand growth that's going to be around one million barrels per day. But uh, you know the the supply growth from from non OPEC plus is going to be a bit higher than that. That is the main worry that you know OPEC plus has right now, and that is uh, one of the reasons why so much deliberation is taking place at OPEC plus in terms of what they want to do with supplies to manage uh, you know the, the demand side. Can you give us a number of the total demand right now? Globally, I think it would. It is somewhere around 102 point something. But uh, yeah, that's that's the sort of. How do you see OPEC Plus respond to the demand side uh, issues? Yeah, see, in 2024, as I said, uh, you know, OPEC Plus has a bit of a tricky task because uh, you know the demand growth that is going to happen for next year is also not going to be uniform throughout the year, right? So what we expect is that you know in the first half of next year there is going to be a surplus supply as compared to demand. Uh, you know, even if uh, you know, e given the given, even if you know, OPEC plus decides to continue the current levels of cuts till the till the mid of next year, even then there's going to be a little bit of surplus. Although you know, as you know, the the the, the seasonal demand trends also kicks in. You know, and Q3 is typically a very strong demand quarter. So we would uh, you know still see some stock draws and you know some deficit uh, in terms of Q3. But Q1 and Q2 Q2 are going to be quite tricky for for OPEC, and that is uh, you know that is the reason why that you know uh, at the time when they are entering a lean demand sort of quarters, they are. They are, their cuts are you know at, at the absolute maximum so they, they need to do something more probably to uh, to help support the prices india enters an election year in 2024 uh, and demand for auto fuels is typically high ahead of the elections so how do you see this the demand for petrol and diesel play out in the year ahead um, in the first half of 24 and post the election period we see india as a secular demand story even right now india has a has a good demand uh, you know I mean, the wedding season and you know all the all the festivities and all those things are one thing. But India right now also has a has a has a health, healthy demand specifically for auto fuels, gasoline, etc. Uh, 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 what we see next year is again you know continuation on on some of those you know continuation of of healthy demand for India. I can't put a number right now because I need to refer something. But uh, but I think the demand trends is going to continue in a in a secular manner for India. Uh, you know pre-election and post-election. Of course, there's, there might be uh, you know a bit of cool down post-elections. But but we we do see you know India continuing to be a uh, to to be a leader in in global oil demand. To what extent is the slowdown in China a worry? Slowdown in China is a bit of a worry. Uh, you know, uh, you know, China used to be a, uh, the biggest contributor to global oil demand in the last 20 years, right? I mean, oil industry used to look for China to be the growth frontier, uh, you know, you know, always, right? But uh, but what has happened in the last three years is the 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 demand growth from China is sort of you know plateaued, right? And uh, you know, 2023 was expected to be a good year for China because they were coming out of lockdowns, etc. Demand did recover in China a little bit, but not to the extent you know the world was expecting, right? Uh, you know, given given they're coming out from such a strict lockdown, you know, they still contributed about 70% of the 60 to 70% of the global demand growth on the product side of things. If you uh, if you look at which product, it depends on which product you're looking for, but. Uh, but going ahead, you know, again, uh, the 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 scenario for China doesn't look very positive because uh, you know, again, uh, I mean, again, next year is 
the base effect is going to be away is is going to be out of the equation as regards as you know reopening is concerned because china has been open for most parts of 2023 uh, so uh, so it is going to be a bit of a worry and a challenge you know for the oil markets uh, you know on on the longer term side you know we should also remember that china has a very stated goal you know in terms of dialing back on the oil demand and you know Uh, meeting its energy demand through some of the sustainable sources so uh, so i mean china is not sort of followed through on that policy as much but you know it is a it is a very stated policy for china and you know if if they start following through with them in 2024 25 who knows but you know when when they start following through with that i think that is uh, uh, i mean th- there is going to be a bit of a uh, you know demand worry uh, in terms of in terms of looking looking ahead what are the three Uh, to five worries for the oil markets going into 2024 see due to 2024 a lot of things can play out frankly uh, you know uh, of course china demand is is one factor we just talked about but other than that you know what opec plus is going to do because uh, you know because right now opec plus is is cutting quite a lot and you know if they uh, if they plan to you know dial it back so if they decide to dial that that back down i think that's going to be one major challenge uh other things of course you know geopolitics will always remain a uh, remain a big driver in terms of the oil markets uh, what what's happened what what will happen there is is of course a big worry uh, uh in terms of economy things are looking okay right now i mean uh, i mean they they there's certainly you know some uh, some economic worries in certain part of the world but you know overall uh, you know overall economic picture looks better in 2024 to to some extent as compared to 2023 so uh, so that's economy is that is not that big a worry right uh, another big worry for the energy market not so much as the oil market but the gas markets is uh, you know the winters of 2023 if the winters are going to be very harsh and strong we will uh, we will see some uh, some you know energy deficits uh, in europe even though their inventories are quite high but uh, all depends on winters there uh, you know uh, you know how how europe is going to cope up with the with uh, with no russian gas or you know or, or the kind of russian gas they're taking right now uh, you know without uh, uh, you know in, in case there is a harsh winter i think that's a that's a very uh, interesting equation to look at and what extent are the markets factoring all these uh, issues at the current levels i think markets are uh, you know are quite uh, quite stable right now and the reason is that you know most of the risk factors are already priced in in the prices can gas prices be a joker in the uh, pack for india uh, even as oil prices remain stable oil gas actually uh, impacts a lot of uh, activities uh, you know back home see in india uh, there are and by the way when we talk about gas prices in india there are it's a multi tiered market right there's there's different types of gas that goes on in india at uh, at these levels of crude oil you know around 80 dollars a barrel i think uh, the current prices are you know sort of uh, where uh, you know you would find of course india has a policy of uh, ceiling and floor as well right on the on the largest component of domestic gas so uh, so so uh, you know any increase in prices or any upward pressure in the in terms of the global energy market is going to be capped you know by the hard cap that indian government has put on the gas prices that's one thing uh, uh, you know for india you know uh, you know in terms of increasing penetration of gas in the in the domestic economy and all the all those stated things i think you know gas needs to be much more cheaper frankly to uh, to go deeper into a lot of more industries uh, right now you know the global energy balances do not seem uh, you know very bearish in terms of either the gas market or the oil market of course there's going to be big uh, global supply of lng coming in 2025 20 late 2025 to 2026 when we might see you know some uh, some fundamental uh, decline or rather cooling off of lng prices but till then i think uh, you know gas prices pretty much are going to be where they are right now that's all for now thank you for joining us If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. She's working her way to the corner office. Business Standard.